Hello everyone, this is Robert, and this video is going to be a little bit different than my traditional content. Behind me, you can see I have an FL Sun S1, and this is not going to be a review of this printer. There's plenty of reviews out there. This is actually something that I bought with my own money. They did not send me this. I have no communication with them. And this is something I actually saw and purchased on my own. And it is a beautiful, wonderful 3D printer. Look at this. It's got this metal frame. It's massive. You have this huge build volume, beautiful LCD screen, but it doesn't work. It doesn't actually do the things it says it's going to do. And this is becoming very commonplace in the consumer 3D printing industry. There's a lot of great marketing hype. A lot of reviewers are talking about how it's the next new blank killer. This is the new thing. This is the new hotness. It comes out and eh, we all kind of gloss over the fact of eh, it doesn't really do those things, but you should buy it. Check out the affiliate link down below. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. We need to stop this and don't buy this printer. Don't buy any of the new printers coming out. Wait until they get their shit sorted before you do. Aside from being a YouTuber, I am a normal 3D printing enthusiast like everyone else. So when I saw the FL Sun S1 announced, looked at the specs, I thought this thing is going to be awesome. This is my dream printer. Of course, there were some specs that I saw that I'm like, yeah, that's probably not going to be real. But even if it hit half that, I guess I'd be perfectly fine. But the reality is it's just marketing bullshit and lies. So let's kind of talk about these. So the flow rate, the flow rate of this machine is supposed to be about 110 cubic millimeters, which is insane. To give you some context, something like the Prusa Mark IV can do between 20 and 25 on a good day. Same with the XL, same extruder setup. The Bamboo X1C can do probably closer to 30. I think people are hitting between 25 and 30 with that. You can upgrade the hot end, upgrade the nozzle and get a little bit higher. And I had a Creality K1 Max with an upgraded hot end and nozzle. And I was getting like almost to that 35 range. So 35 is about the peak that you're going to get from a standard printer. I know some of the Voron guys are going a lot higher, but that's generally the standard for a printer right now that's high flow. So this thing at 110, it's bullshit. It can't actually do 110. It does do about 40 to 50 very reliably, and you could probably print most things at about 50 and be okay, assuming you have the right filament, assuming you have a high flow PLA. Not all PLAs are gonna work like that. I did some pretty exhaustive testing with this, tested a lot of different filaments, and only a few of the high speed could even get up to that amount. And then you go, you go away from PLA and you know, you can't do that. So how'd they end up hitting 110? Well, if you watch James Clow's review of this, which I highly recommend, it's very detailed. I'm not going to get that detailed because it's not worth the time or effort. If you watch his video, he found that they're basically cheating it. They had a specific G code that would get to those numbers. All it did is turn the acceleration way down so you'd never hit the speeds. So they either didn't know what they were doing or they were just trying to lie to the customer. Both of them are pretty bad. So next up, let's talk about build volume and chamber temperature. This one's pretty easy. The build volume is listed at 320 diameter by 430 millimeters tall. It can't actually do 430 millimeters over the whole area. James Clow, once again, has a really good explanation of this, but due to the way a Delta printer works, it can't really hit that maximum volume in the full build volume, just kind of a little bit in the middle for that last, I think it was like 50 millimeters, something like that. So this really only has about a 380 millimeter tall build volume, which might not really seem like that much of a difference, but if you're kind of weighing these specs side by side, it's about a 15% reduction in overall build volume. Not to mention a lot of people might not understand that the round build volume of a Delta can be a little bit more problematic if you're doing a lot of square things. I'm not gonna fault them for that. It's a Delta printer, that's very obvious. But that extra 15% off the top kind of changes things a little bit when this is already such a huge printer. I was also under the impression that this was a heated chamber because I think the wording is a bit misleading. They say up to 50 degrees Celsius chamber temperature, but it's not heated in any way. That's just completely passive. And like almost any printer that's enclosed, you can just turn on the heated bed and let it sit there 
and yeah, you can heat up the inside, but there is no mechanism on this to really control the inside temperature. So it's maybe a little disingenuous to say that this has up to 50 degrees Celsius chamber because there is no chamber temperature control. Raise your hand if you're sick about hearing about AI. This printer, like so many others, claims to have AI. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't work. It's false positives or false negatives. There is no reliability to it. And quite frankly, most of the time, it just kind of goes in the middle and just waits for several minutes and then continues printing, even if there is an issue or isn't an issue. Maybe it does have AI, I don't know, but it doesn't work, it doesn't do anything, it's not reliable, you can have spaghetti inside, and also this vision detection stuff, um, especially with the bamboo as well, if you're printing black filament on a black textured build plate, it's never going to detect anything. The vision is, in my opinion, not the right way to go. This of course claims that it has AI, and it just doesn't do anything. It does not work as advertised at all. So this is what, like 2024? Remember back in the early days of 3D printing where you bought a 3D printer and then you'd have to kind of find your own slicer, you'd have to generate your own print profiles and you know, kind of figure all that out. We've moved past that. If you buy something like a Bamboo or a Prusa, it comes with all sorts of good print profiles, all the different filament types you're ever gonna wanna use, you know, extra fine detail, fine detail, draft mode, speed, structural, all that good stuff. Does this come with that? Nope. Comes with one of those stupid skinned versions of Cura that is way far behind, doesn't do what any of the new slicers do. Oh, just use Orca Slicer, sure, and recreate all the profiles by hand. If you check the link down below, you will not find my profiles that I created. You wanna know why? That's the company that should be providing them for you. They don't provide you anything. They give you kind of a standard 0.2 millimeter standard profile, but it isn't even close to what this thing can do in terms of speed. You have to heavily, heavily modify it to get it to really do what this thing is even close to advertised as doing. Um, I end up taking the Bamboo X1C profile and kind of copying that over, creating my own, and then making some tweaks and adjustments for the faster speed of this, and it generally works. We'll talk about print quality in a second, but that's work that you shouldn't have to do. They should be shipping in 2024, they should be shipping a printer that has all of the necessary print profiles. I don't expect them to have the filament uh, profiles for all the different filaments out there like some of the better companies do, but they basically provide you nothing. Just the bare, bare minimum to ship it out the door. So let's talk about print quality. Do you like salmon skin? What about ringing? What about zits and blobs and inconsistent extrusion? If you answered yes to all three of these, have I got the printer for you? Check the affiliate link down below. No, this thing, this thing needs some love. Um, the print quality of this is not very good. It can print fast, like three times faster than the bamboo fast, but it never looks good. No matter how much you slow it down, no matter how much you tune it and tweak it, it just never really looks that nice. Even with very simple PLA prints, it's always mediocre at best. And I'm not going to go into that many details. Other people have already said some of this stuff. Some people are glossing over it, but they don't know what the hell they're doing with tuning a printer like this. Um, there's a lot of things that are like oddly turned off, like the fact that you can't adjust pressure advance. Like you can run a test, but it just kind of ignores all the pressure advance values. There's a lot of little stuff like that to where even if you try and get a good print profile going and tuning this thing, it's just gonna ignore it. They've done some things in the firmware on this that prevent you from getting a good print out of it. The hardware seems like it's there. The closed loop stepper might be a bit of an issue. Um, the thing just kind of rings and has a lot of excess noise in it. I think it needs some PID tuning. But beyond that, the hardware looks really good. They've just crippled the software to it really can't work all that well. So there were a few more features that I was really interested in with this machine that don't really seem to work the way that they're supposed to or seem really sloppily implemented. The first was the integrated filament dryer. I was really excited to see this. Come on. 
That's all it does. Um, can't change the temperature. I don't actually get a temperature readout. I think it might get warm up there. I guess. And then I can set, you know, a time, like nine hours. Cool, but wouldn't it be nice if you had a button to have a preset for different temperatures for different filaments, PLA, nylon, you know, TPU, whatever, or even be able to adjust this temperature or say, turn on with the print. You don't get any of that. You can turn it on and off. That's, that's not really a good feature. This is kind of on the level of what like a $30, you know, separate filament dryer would be. This really isn't a useful feature in my opinion. Then up here, we have the filament weight sensor. This is a little scale that measures how much filament is in there. It is not 0%. I have about 20% left on that spool. This always reads 0%. Pretty useful. Um, I can press down the spool, I can lift it up. It always reads 0%, pretty awesome. This, this is supposed to be an indicator on um, how much time is left on the print or the progress. This is all it does. It's just on, all the time. There used to be a feature in the last firmware you could change this from RGB, even though like the B wasn't B, it could only go from like yellow to green. It's now just solid white and there's no options. That's pretty cool. Lastly, I do a lot of abrasive filament and I like all my printers to be able to print abrasive filament. This is listed as being able to do that. It does not have a hardened hot end. It cannot actually print abrasive without wearing out. It has a CHT type thing in there, a knockoff of course, and it is not hardened so this will wear out if you use it with abrasive. So once again, they are basically lying to you saying that it can be used with abrasives because it really shouldn't be used with abrasives. But doesn't this look nice? Check the affiliate link down below. It's conclusion time. I think I'm going to kind of continue with the theme of the video and rant a little bit more about where we've gotten to in the consumer 3D printing industry. Myself included, I'm throwing myself in this bucket, we've gotten very, very complacent with manufacturers saying one thing and doing something else. I think a prime, prime example for myself is my series of videos with the Prusa XL. It had a lot of really grandiose claims and some of those were true, but a lot of them were not. And it didn't really have that great a print quality. It came out with the wrong nozzle. It came out missing a lot of features. It was very obviously rushed and underwhelming. It eventually recovered on some of those aspects. Um, the networking is still awful, but it did ultimately recover and it is a useful printer and there is you know, some use cases for it. I think really Bamboo is one of the few companies that made good on all their initial promises, but pretty much everyone else, the whole YouTube community is just giving them a bunch of slack. You will watch so many reviews of new products that come out and there's a lot of kind of excuses or, you know, I've been told that they're coming out with firmware to fix this. You know, I've said that. I know those emails back and forth with the manufacturer and we just kind of give them leeway. But really in the end, they're saying it can do this and it can't do that or it can't do that in the way that everyone was expecting it to, you know. So I think we need to stop buying the new fanciest printer that comes out. We need to stop chasing this, you know, bamboo killer concept. Like, is this the new best printer? All that's doing is trying to generate this FOMO, you know, the fear of missing out. When you see a thumbnail that is, this is, you know, a such and such killer, all it's trying to do is clickbait for one and it's trying to get you to watch that video and be like, I need to buy this right now at this discounted price with their affiliate code because this is gonna be the next big printer. Nine times out of 10, it's not gonna be. That's happened basically once with the Bamboo. Um, it's never really happened any other time in the history of consumer 3D printing. So it's okay if you miss out. Um, you're probably not gonna miss out. So I'm telling this to myself too, is stop buying the latest fanciest thing because yeah, it might look like the dream printer on paper, but it's probably not actually going to be. It's probably going to be just a hot mess when it gets released like every other printer that comes out. So don't buy the FL Sun S1 until it's fully fixed and working. Stop buying Kickstarter printers. Stick with the known values. Stick with Bamboo. Stick with Prusa if you like Prusa. Even Creality is a little suspect. But yeah, 
the industry needs to get a lot better and a lot more honest. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.